Good morning. I welcome you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I call your attention to the announcements that are printed in your bulletin, but first, did you look up this morning? The sun was up. Oh, thank you. The cross is up on the top of the steeple. So if you did not notice it this morning, shamey, shamey. Uh, yes, after about 18 months of waiting and fabricating and, well, even the installation, you know, the crane's not working and all kinds of stuff, we finally got it on. And uh, following service this morning, there will be a cross dedication that will be in the parking lot, five minutes kind of thing. So if you would like to participate in that, just, you know, Grab a cup of coffee and uh, join us out in the parking lot so that we can uh, give thanks to God for the, a project completed and a way in which that the community uh, sees and recognizes that uh, the presence of Christ is in the community. Also, for those who are serving on church council, congregation council meeting is tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. Your materials are in the... Uh, are in your boxes outside of the narthex. So uh, if you want to grab those and prep yourself for the meeting for tomorrow night, that would be awesome. Uh, change for changes for today is today. So uh, make sure that if whatever change you got or whatever folded change you have, uh, that would work well too. Uh, that'll happen right at the end of the children's sermon. Also, two opportunities to be supportive of our community on April 27th, there is Baseball Town, and Baseball Town volunteers are being uh, sought now. There's a sign-up sheet on the uh, bulletin board. This is to volunteer uh, in the morning for the, the baseball game that, uh, that goes on at the uh, Reading Phillies uh, Stadium. So uh, volunteer for that. That would be awesome. And... You volunteered so well, and you want to eat dinner that night, but you don't want to cook. You could go to St. Paul's Mertztown for a spaghetti dinner to spon that is sponsored by the Long Swamp Boy Scout Troop 575. All you can eat, and so you got a morning day, and then you got an evening thing, and you're super supportive of the community. Put that down on your calendar. Uh, last night, we had uh, a sponsored event by our fun committee. It was a potluck puzzle competition. Now, there was, what, six teams? I'm looking for Sue, and I don't... Six, five teams. Um, each team had the same 500-piece puzzle. Uh, each team had two hours to complete it, and uh, some threw in the towel... But the winning team consisted of Bella Reitenauer, Emily Reitenauer, uh, Jonathan Engbert, Liz Kemner, and yes, our very own Dominic Tomasi. So, well done to those groups. I was also told that there were many uh, puzzle sweatings. There should have been a competition for that. Uh, because they were sweating over, <laughs> and the shapes of the pu and the puzzle pieces were not standard. They were like angled and weird shaped, and uh, that was uh, that was something. And uh, so the next fun event, if I remember correctly, is a an event in a couple months for uh, it's a uh, minute to win it kind of night. If you ever remember that game show, minute to win it. Um, little tiny events, take you a minute, competition, all that kind of good stuff. So look for things that are coming up um, in the future. Uh, thinking what else? Uh, that's all I have right now. Um, any prayer, any other announcements? Seafood orders are due today that's, that help to uh, fund our scholarship funds. So, so if you have not done so, uh, URL is in the bulletin. There's also sign-up sheets that you could fill out, hard copies. And, uh, and uh, we'll need some help Saturday morning to help 
put all that stuff together, making crab cakes and all that sort of stuff. Um, so if you can do that, that would be great. Prayer concerns. Anybody need a reminder for individuals for prayer? Oh, uh, yes. The Burroughs family. Thank you. Okay. Any others? Oh, yep. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. Any others? All right. Then seeing no others, let us please rise to begin our service. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ear, all nature sings and round me. This is
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. And would the youth come forward, please? Hey, nice sneakers. All right. Hi, Abby. Good morning, guys. Well, that was a nice good morning, but nothing came from over here. So I'm not even going to say good. I'm just going to say morning. 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 Look at that. That's the enthusiasm we're looking for. All right? So remember that. Okay. What do you got, Abby? All right. Can I squeeze it? I can't squeeze it. Can I throw it? No, I can't throw it either. Can't squeeze it, can't throw it. Do I have to be gentle with it? Have to be gentle. I have the touch of a baby rhinoceros, so this is going to be kind of challenging. Okay. Okay. Well, this is all right. This is a rainbow corns mermaid corn surprise. Do I? Can I eat this? No, I can't eat it either. Can I open it? All right, so what does that look like to you guys? Now, that looks like a tail, you're right, but the whole thing, it looks like an egg, doesn't it? So if I, and you can see, it's even got like the little, uh, like the little indentations that if I go, do I have to be careful? I, uh, I gotta squeeze it to open it. Well, I close it. All right, so I'm going to give that to you. Now, this looks like something here. Can I take it all out? Yeah. I take it all out, but I got to figure out how to get the fins out, right? So, do you normally keep it this way, or do you have this like on your bed or in your room, or you can? Okay. All right, because I don't want to rip the tail off and. You know, that'd be terrible, and then I'd, ha I'd yeah, that would be awful. All right. Come on, tail. All right, there we go. Oh, okay, you got it. All right, got to flip the tail. All right, so this is a creation of all things here. So this is what it looks like. All right, so is this a flamingo? It's a flamingo, honey. It's a flamingo maid. What, do I have to guess her name? Flo. No? Uh, M M Mango. No. Uh, you're going to have to tell me her name. You forget. <laughs> All right. So we'll call, we'll call her Gus. No, not... What's that? It's a girl. It's a girl. Gussie? Yeah. You just call her Flamingo. All right, so I got a Flamingo that's in the shape of a mermaid with, note, a unicorn horn and, are those butterfly wings? No? Fairy wings. Fairy wings unicorn horn in mermaid flamingo, right? Is that what we're talking about? When did you get this? I'm going to assume you got it for Easter because it's in an egg. 
You got it yesterday. Well, yesterday wasn't Easter. What were you doing that you picked this up? Mom and dad got this for you? Did your grandmother get it for you? You just got it. Thanks, mom and dad. <laughs> all right, this is a weird creation. Would you, normally, would you guys normally put all of these things together? Unicorn, fairy, flamingo, mermaid. No, you're going, no way, I wouldn't do that. All right, so how about this? How about, um, it's a mammal, not this one, but it's a mammal. You know, mammals have hair. Mammals uh, don't lay eggs, right? Normally they don't lay eggs. But a mammal that lays eggs, that is covered with fur, it has a duck bill, and it's got webbed feet, and it lives in the water, and it can be out of the water. That's called the duckbill platypus. That's one of God's creations. That's one of those where you go, huh? Just kind of like, huh? Well, God is all about the huh? Because sometimes God just goes, I'm going to create, and it's going to be cool, and you're not always going to get it. Like, boy, uh, you know, we're going to make a ruby, Huh? Right there. She's doing her own thing, right? Just going, just doing her own thing. She's just, you know, glad to be here, just, you know. And, uh, huh? All the way back there. Huh? Right, I'm pointing at you. That's right. And all the way in the back there. Regina. Huh? That's what God does. God goes, I'm going to create something that you wouldn't expect. And it's going to be awesome and it's going to be beautiful because God says so. And that's what we get here today. We get this awesome flamingo mermaid fairy unicorn that is in an egg. And you know why? Because, huh, God says so. You're wearing the egg now. Can you fit into that? You couldn't fit. Are you sure? I bet we could get you in that eggshell. But that's what the cool thing about God is, is that God creates stuff that is just amazing. And so even you guys, nobody could have imagined that God would create something as awesome as you guys. But he did. God created awesomeness, and we call it you, and we call it them. And we call it, see the camera over there, anybody that's watching online. That's the awesomeness of God. So God decides to make things that we might go, huh? But they're awesome because God made them. So, Abby, this is awesome. And you're going to have fun putting them back into, I didn't break the egg, did I? When I opened it up, I didn't break it, good. So you're going to have to put Gus Back in the egg. You don't think it's Gus? Flamingo, right, it's Flamingo. And so we're gonna do one more awesome thing that we're gonna take up the change for change offering. And now that's an awesome thing because there are kids around the world, particularly for us in Haiti, that God says are awesome. And we're going to help them by making a small thing into a big thing. So the bowls are there. If you guys want to take those around and um, see what you guys can get from the, the folks, either the folded kind of change or the noisy kind of change. You still working on that there, Abby? You need help? Okay, let me see if I can clump them together. Oh, I see. Okay, got to get, oh. All right, so in the back here, we got to get those. Dun, 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 dun.
All right, let us pray with, for these gifts. Oh, got one more? Come on over, Abby. All right. You want to dump on in there too? All right. Thank you. And so let us pray, okay? Gracious God, we thank you for these youth that are here today. These kids are awesome, and you made them that way. Help us to always remember that whatever you create is a great and glorious and beautiful thing. And we thank you for these gifts that the kids have collected from the people in the church, that these gifts would go and to help those who are in different places than where we live that they would be helped out and that they would know that they are awesome because you have put us in a position where we can help them. Help us always to take care of each other. For this and all things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, uh, Abby, where did, oh, it's over here. Anybody want the bag for next? You, you think you got the stuff? All right. All right. Thank you. And uh, you guys go off to Sunday school. Carla, they're all yours. Good morning. A reading from Acts, the third chapter. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers, in this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Please read responsibly from the fourth psalm. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. A reading of 1 John, the third chapter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, he will be like him. We will be like him for we will see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. 
Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself touch me and see for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have and when he said this he showed them his hands and his feet while there while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering Jesus said to them have you anything to eat they gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I have spoken to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. The season of Easter is, uh, the Gospels are always about uh, reinforcing the witness of the resurrection. There's always going to be stories about, you know, Jesus appearing, appearing to the disciples, appearing to folks on the road to Emmaus, appearing to the uh, uh, in the upper room, these kinds of appearances. And whenever Jesus shows up, it's a combination of Jesus saying, peace be still, whoever they're talking to, freak out. And then Jesus explains again what was to take place, and yet still they're looking and they don't get it. And here in the gospel, it reminds us that they were uh, startled and terrified. And while in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. Okay. That's a great combination. I think humans are able to keep that kind of stuff in tension. You know, that sense of I'm, I'm happy and I'm joyful, but yet I still can't believe this is possible. So uh, the question for even, I think, every generation past the original apostles is, would you know Jesus if Jesus was in your midst? Would you recognize Jesus? I would dare say our first impression would be no. I know mine would. Would I recognize Jesus? Am I looking for... The, the, the crucified Christ, the one with the holes in his hands and his feet and his side. But I look for those things. Because I look at you, and you look at me, and I don't have any of those things. I don't have the hands and feet and wounds that way. But yet... Jesus calls us to be his hands and his feet and his 
body and the world. So, do we resemble Jesus? I don't know. Because, you know, I've watched the movies, right? Isn't Jesus like Max von Sydow from The Greatest Story Ever Told? You know, he's slender, he's a white guy with long brown hair, sparkling blue eyes, right? That's Jesus. Jesus wouldn't have looked like that. Oh, but then we saw him in Godspell. Godspell had Jesus with kind of an afro and had his face painted like a clown. And he had a Superman shirt on with suspenders. That's Jesus, right? Hmm. Okay, we've watched uh, uh, The Last Temptation of Christ. Jesus looks like Willem Dafoe. We watched uh, the Mel Gibson movie, The Passion of the Christ. And Jesus looked like James Caviezel. Okay, a little closer. But could it possibly be that Jesus looks like Bill? Is it possible that Jesus looks like Bill? Is it possible that Jesus looks like Craig? That Jesus looks like Emily? Is it possible that Jesus looks like that? Well, I would dare say it's possible. Because if Jesus is making the, the connection between all that was written about him, law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, all of that must be fulfilled and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed to all nations, starting from Jerusalem. But then how does it start in Jerusalem and get to Fleetwood? Well, someone along the way wound up proclaiming the message of Jesus, proclaimed the message of the gospel, the good news of God's salvation in the world. And it moved about that Jesus' presence was in the midst of those who were doing this, and that became the reality throughout the world. Now, granted, we have screwed that up along the way, we just have to look at, you know, the holy wars, and we look at the, uh, the Inquisition, and we look at certain things about the way in which we blend the worldly stuff with the godly stuff, and it doesn't always work because we're getting our hands in it too much. Less God, more us. And whenever that happens, like First John and the book of Acts remind us, as soon as that happens... We then forget about the message of the gospel, and it's all about us. But somewhere along the way, the presence of Christ through the Holy Spirit continued to do what God was intending for the message to do. And the whole idea that God would actually use us to communicate the message of forgiveness and repentance that through us the message of hope and compassion come through. That God's hands are in the midst of us because Joanne's hands are working. Because Meg's voice is proclaiming. This is how Jesus is in the world now. That takes a little more, you know, that's a stretch for many. Because, oh, yeah, that's an awesome thing, but could you let somebody else do that? Because you know what I'm like, and you know who I am, and you know my idiosyncrasies, and you know my problematic pieces. Why would you want me to be Jesus in the world? Now, I'm not talking about that you're going to walk on water and that you're going to turn water into wine and you're going to do all of those things. I'm talking about the message that God had transcended through the prophets, through Moses, through the Psalms, that the relationship with God and his people has always been 
that God has sought us out first, that God has sought to make covenant with us, to gift us before we could even know what that is. And how can that then be made possible in the midst of our daily life, that before anybody knows how to ask, like if we're grieving or we're lamenting or we're angry or we're frustrated or we're wondering and disbelieving, how are we as the body of Christ there to give confidence and hope? In this case, Jesus was looking for something to eat because the ghost is not going to eat broiled fish. I've watched all those movies, Patrick Swayze, Casper, they don't eat anything. Flesh and blood does. So how do we become the confidence, the confidence and faith for those in this world? That's where we take our call as brothers and sisters, as children of God, as First John reminds us, see what the Father's love has done for us, that we would call ourselves or be called children of God, for that is what we are. That is the witness of First John, to see ourselves as heirs, as brothers and sisters of Jesus, and that where we go, the family name goes. That might be disbelieving for some because they know where we go. They know what we do. They know how we talk. They know what our heart's filled with sometimes. And that's why the constancy of working with and through our faith to be in constant prayer with our Father, to be able to let God say to us, you're my child, you're my sculpture. You're my clay that I am molding. One of the great hymns of the church that is in our hymnal, um, Change My Heart, O God. The words are, change my heart, O God, make it ever new. Change my heart, O God, let me be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. That is what we're talking about. The evidence of the resurrected Christ is found now within the life of the church. For those who know, for those who believe, and it's not a perfect faith, and it's not a perfect expression, but it's yours. It's ours. And we do what we are able to do, not believing that we're limited in any fashion, but that God is going to work through us because that's what God has promised to do from that generation long ago in Jerusalem after the first resurrection's appearances to this day. And the way in which I know that Christ is still alive, that Christ is flesh and blood, is because I see it in you. That you are evidence to the world that Christ is alive, that Christ is raised. And it's not just for you, and it's not just a private thing. Because faith is personal, but it was never intended to be private. Yeah, the world does need, I don't know if proof is the right word, but evidence? Evidence more than the Sunday morning coming to worship, more than you know, listening to contemporary Christian music in your car. It needs more than that. Because the world needs more than that. It might be good for you, but the world needs more. Don't be afraid to use the expressions of Jesus, to be that flesh and blood, to proclaim repentance and forgiveness in such a fashion that you're not calling people out and shaming them. But more like what Paul did was admonish. The reason why I say these things is because I know I wrestle with them. And if I'm wrestling with it, can only imagine that you might be wrestling with something like that too. 
that's admonishment as opposed to saying turn and burn. We allow our humanness, our woundedness, our healed nature to be evidence of the Christ in the world to others. You are witnesses of these things, just like Luke says. So as witnesses, let us proclaim the truth to the world, that Christ has died, that Christ is risen, that Christ will come again, and that Christ is here. Amen. again earth can breathe again pass the word around love's abound jesus lives again of God, gathered here today, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He is he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church the world, and all those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share this holy meal that the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity abundant life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. We pray for our nation, divided by its own political discord and strife, which continues to sever our relationships with one another. We pray for the nations of Israel, for Palestine, for Iran, as the insanity of war continues and ramps up in the Middle East. Soften the hearts of leaders. Permit forgiveness and renewal to abound in the hearts of leaders and decision makers. 
and provide shelter and safety for the innocent and the oppressed in their lands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty. Heal and bless those in need of healing from physical, mental, or emotional wounds. Especially this day, we pray for Carol, Reagan, Maureen, Julie, Gracie, Ruth Ann, Joan, Wayne and Laurenette, Tish, Dustin, Joan and Daniel, Mark, Michelle, Lonnie, Diane, Richard and Joanne, Michael, Maria, Mark, Kristen and Avery, the Burroughs family, and for those who lost their home in Reading, and all others we name before you aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our center, you bring all together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry. We pray that this place would be filled with witnesses to your power and resurrection in our lives. We pray for those who are searching, who do not know you, those who have been wounded by the church, for those looking for a loving community of faith. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share the peace.
Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, O Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In this meal, righteousness and peace meet together. Come, take your place at the table.
Savior Jesus Christ bless you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word in this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and to serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. <laughs> kind of about right. That's good. It's not like it's not like her fist bump is is bad, but. Yours is better. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> hey, I'm feeding you with the body of...